Did you miss me? What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Hustle with Jesse W. And today I'm back. I'm back from vacation. And yes, I was on vacation since the 6th. Right here somewhere, you could probably see it. I was down in the Florida Keys, catching some fish, catching some sun, and enjoying the ocean. I do have some live trades here for you today, and I want you to check them out. So stay tuned. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and jump right on into this. Um, let me gather a couple windows here. And as I do that, do me one quick favor. Smash that like button for me. It really helps out. It helps with the algorithm on these videos. And make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't. If you have, thank you very much. I appreciate every, every single one of you. So let's see here. Today, I woke up, had SPI on watch along with SINT. I was in between both of them. Ended up taking two trades on SPI, both of them winners, but they weren't as good as they could have been. Still sitting on a real nice day, uh, well over a single uh, for the day, so that's not bad, especially for my first day back after what I've been gone for like 12 days. So SPI had news this morning, and let me get you the daily over here. So here's the SPI daily. You know what? Let me get you the other chart. It's a little bit bigger, easier to read. Here we go. I do have live trades on all of these for you. And there we go, SPI. So, you know, I was looking at this area right here in the 330s. It was this top you know, around these tops, more or less, this bounce area here, this bounce area here. And I thought to myself, that might be a good bounce area to get long in front of, okay? So, you know, I stayed disciplined, watched it off the bell. Uh, you know, I won't trade the bell itself. So I wait for my setup. I wait for, for a, a pattern to start to develop. And here we go. So off the bell, we see SPI just sells right off, like nasty. Like, I mean, if you were shorting this thing, you know, up here pre-market, I mean, you you banked. Uh, but what happened was, as time progressed, I was looking at SINT. I came to take a peek over SPI and I start to see that it's holding above this, you know, 315, 317, 320 area. And it's having resistance at that 330 area. So I was like, well, damn, this doesn't look half bad to take a starter uh, down here with a stop near the low of the day and add as we break up over this area an increase in volume and look and see if we can make it back up to $4. That was the plan. That was the plan for the first trade. And that's exactly what I did. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and jump right on into that. My second trade was very similar to the first in the sense that as we were consolidating here and going sideways, we had the same action here. So I said, okay, well, you know what? This is very safe entry right here. Very low risk with high reward. You know, I'm going to risk here like nine, 10 cents for the chance of making like 50 cents and above if we get a $4 break. So I took another trade on it and... I ended up selling some 361. So I sold some, I'm guessing, yeah, and one of these two candles. And actually in this candle, I believe, I know that in this candle here, I had half my position left. And when we broke out of that 375 area that I was eyeing, I, th I said, okay, let's go. But we quickly retraced it and I said, goodbye. And then we had the very next candle, this nasty pullback. So I didn't get caught up in that. So let's see here. The first trade, let's bring that one up. Okay, so see, here we're in. 500 shares, cost basis 337. I'm looking for, you know, a real nice break over VWAP and a push to $4. This trade took about 20 minutes, so... Let's start fast forwarding a little bit, huh? We're holding this 325 area. At the time, my stop was down here under this tail, okay, which is the lower day 315. As the trade starts to progress, my stop starts to move up to this 90 MA because I see that we're holding support right in front of it. So when that happens, okay, which is coming up right, right around now, when I start to notice this 90 MA, is holding up as support and we're making higher lows and higher lows i decide to add another 250 shares to the trade okay as we start to break over that 340 area i mentioned earlier and 
At that point, I said my dollar risk is the same because I'm no longer risking to low of day because now my new risk is the 90 EMA because it's showing that it's support. So I can safely add to the position and keep more or less the same dollar amount risk on the trade and giving me a whole lot more upside if the trade triggers. So here we go. Should be adding here soon. There it is. There's the ad. VWAP is still resistance, but... I'm in at three, well, my cost basis is 339, factoring in commissions, and my stop is like 20 cents under. It's not a big deal. We get that breakover VWAP, increasing volume, as you see there. And now we start to make that real nice move. I take off 250 shares right there instantly in front of that 375, and now I'm looking to take another 250 shares off over here in front of four dollars and hold on to 250 more shares looking for the four dollar break you know but we don't get it i take off another you know when we start getting that action there i take off another 250 shares leaving me with 250 so now i say to myself okay these 250 shares that are remaining are the last ones that i added my new cost basis as you can see here is 344 i'm going to play around with these and I'm going to stop out somewhere in the break-even area, maybe a little bit under it, to give it some space and see if we want to consolidate above these three, you know, 40 area, and then get the squeeze up to $4. We have real nice increase in volume. But we don't get it. We start to kind of come back down here. So I'm like, okay, let's see if we can hold this 90 MA. If we hold the 90 MA, I'm still in the trade. And there, it looked like we were going to break it, and I stop out. As you can tell right there, I stop out. So I was up 120 bucks at the time. Um, net profit at that time was 105 after I stopped out of those last 250s. Lost a couple bucks there, but it was totally worth the risk. Now we continue to break down as I suspected, and that's it, right? So it starts to get choppy. Let me show you. I started to record just to show you guys. Whoops. It starts to get it starts to become a choppy trade we we break over vwap come back underneath it come back under 90 ma we start to hold this 325 area try to break vwap again um let's fast forward here we break above it come back under it above under now okay so here's when when i re-enter my my trade so once i start noticing that we're holding that vwap 90 ma area fairly well i re-enter the trade For the second attempt because i'm thinking shorts are trapped in here in this 350 area and if we break over this 375 area we should be able to go to four dollars that's my thought process here so i'm in on a cost basis of 357 and my stop is 349 because it's just underneath this vwap 90 ma 350 area very low risk on the trade very very low risk on the trade less than 10 cents a share risk on the trade okay for an upside potential of you know, tremendous value here. This trade took a while, as you can see, it's 24 minutes long. So we'll begin to fast forward a little bit here. We're holding that 350 area. We have a big uh, bid here at 350, 30, 33,000 shares. And he hung around for a good while. So now I'm thinking as soon as we start to clear that area and go to that 375, since I know it's a pivot area, I'm gonna take some profit off there and hold on to the rest for the push to four dollars i'm still in 500 shares there we go right there on that little quick push i take 250 shares off the table right there see we're in 500 take 250 shares off the table right there and now i hold to 250 thinking we're increasing volume it's a small increase but we're increasing volume as we curl up and try to break this 375 very easily we could go see the four dollars right we're not in that environment just yet clearly because we do that quick pop over 375 and then we take it back and i'm like mm, i'm not liking this this should just squeeze right now because this is a very strong pivot point right here just under 375 that we just broke over on a little increase in volume and we're not going shorts are comfortable i'm not liking this now i'm uncomfortable uh even though i have very small size but i'm uncomfortable because the shorts are comfortable I'd only be comfortable if they were uncomfortable. Riddle me that one. And uh, I take it off right here. Boom. And it's still profitable. 
you know, all around, and then we get that nasty pullback, right? Talk about talk about right place at right time, huh? Take it off right there, and bam, very next second, it drops all the way down to the 330. Hey guys, I forgot to show you my orders, and I remembered that just now, right before I started editing. So, figured I'd put this in here real quick. So, initial buy, 335. <clears throat> I bought more at 342 like I mentioned. I sold some at 367, some at 357, stopped out the rest at 339, re-entered the trade a little while later at 355, sold some at 372 and 361. So there you go. Those are my orders. Uh, I'm glad I was able to put this in before um you know, I, put, I uploaded the video. So that's it. You know, finished up my day right around $150 on the day. Not bad for my first day back from the vacations. We're still not in that big popping market for the longs. We're going to get there. And when we do, I think we're going to really capitalize on it. So let me know what you traded today. Drop it in the comment section below. Remember to smash the like button for me if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And let's see what we do tomorrow. Catch you on the next one.